Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm one of your co-moderators, John Becker, along with John North, and it's a pleasure to have you with us on this Sunday morning. We are focused on the candidates. Yes, there is an election that is set for <laughs> August, and you're going to see a lot of them in, over the next few weeks on Inside Tennessee. We welcome two who are running for at-large seat B, Janet Testerman on Knoxville City Council, not running for re-election. So, Bentley Marlowe would like to replace her, as would Debbie Helsley, and we're pleased to have both of you with us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making Thank time. I'm going to introduce our panel, and then we'll get started on questions. Susan Richardson-Williams is a Republican, and she runs her own PR firm. Nice to have you. Good morning, John. Dennis Francis is a Democrat, runs his own law firm. Nice to have you. It's a thrill a minute. Yeah, no, it is a thrill of a minute. Now, these are nonpartisan races. We should say that straight away. But let me start with the easiest question, Ms. Helsley, and that is why you're running. I'm a, okay, I'm a Knoxville native. I've volunteered in this community for all my life. I'm, I'm actually wanting to run for council because I'm now retired, and I have all the time in the world, at least as long as I'm given. Okay. And I'm just more than happy to give back, and I want to be a part of making Knoxville Probably better than it was when I got here, so. We'll talk about your priorities in just a second. Okay. Mr. Marlowe, why are you running? I'm running because I believe housing is the number one crisis facing the city. And my background is a builder that's been active in the Mechanicsville neighborhood, rebuilding historic and older homes, and now transitioning over the last several years into building new homes. I work with all the various departments and boards and regulations that um, affect housing and I believe I know exactly where some bottlenecks are. I have some proposed changes and I believe I could be very effective at helping us get through this and, and resolving the crisis. Let's start with that issue because I know both of you have been talking about this and we have on this broadcast talked about the housing crisis. What do you think is the best solution and I know you proposed some citizen solutions even before being on council recently about it. So it's a complicated process. I mean there's a lot of market forces at play. Uh, East Tennessee is a beautiful area. Uh, our tax structure in Tennessee is very attractive with the remote workforce and people can take their larger salaries from larger cities and relocate here and work remotely. Uh, lots of things are driving a lot of people to move here. But at the same time, we've had a persistent and systematic problem in our design and development services that's been going on for multiple administrations. And we've been able to limp by uh, since the housing crisis because our building went down and we weren't growing as much. And now the, it's all come together and we've got this crisis that's being seen nationwide but especially acute here because everybody wants to be here but our computer systems and our development services department are antiquated our staffing is is at a low level and uh, our zoning code even though we just went through the big recode process three years ago it didn't correct the problems that it needs to correct it's still not a zoning code for the modern day do you agree with that criticism not totally. Okay, totally. Where, where are your differences in that? We, we definitely have a housing crisis. Mm -hmm. that, that's a fact. We do. Um, I think the missing middle housing that they had a workshop on a few weeks ago, I attended, Bentley attended, a whole lot of candidates were there. Um, it, it, the city plans to implement that, and I don't. that's something you can't do overnight. You have to. I think they're going to roll it out like August or September to start in January is what I've heard. They're, they're targeting certain areas, right? Like you can't change the whole city all at one time. It's not like a tethering ban where you can visit it a year later and change it. Once you've got houses built, you're stuck with them. So they were looking at targeting certain areas where there was walkability. Unlike I think the zoning changes he's trying to do just kind of as a citywide change, um, which creates a lot of change at one time. So I, we definitely have a housing crisis and we need to work on it. And there are issues with zoning that need to be changed. True. Let's expand on that and okay. touch on one issue in particular dealing with uh -huh. homelessness, which obviously uh -huh. people on council in the, in the city and the mayor's office have been trying to deal with for a long time, not just a few years, but for uh -huh. more than a decade, 20 years. Um, specifically, let's be uh, blunt about it. Mr. Marlowe, you've made some comments on social media in regards to homelessness and people who are homeless in terms of how they should be treated or how they should be viewed. Uh, I think we have some uh, of those screen grabs, I did want to mention a couple and then you can explain sort of why you said what you said. One is, for example, talking about them, they are human only by DNA and of humanoid form in all honesty. These are rabid animals. Uh, I think we have a couple more. One, there's one where you reference them being vermin at the troughs. 
another, uh, they live like animals, like sick animals. The human thing to do is to put them down, suggesting euthanasia. And maybe one more. Reasonable people would all unanimously say euthanize until they saw a picture of an animal and it looked like a humanoid. That's some really strong stuff. That would give a lot of people pause and think, wow, who is the guy that would say something like that? And why should we have somebody like that in an elected office? So can you explain? Um, those posts came from several years ago surrounding the COVID crisis when we had the large camp develop in my backyard under Blackstock. Uh, inside that camp, we had a murder in broad daylight. We had a serial rapist. Uh, groups of five or more uh, homeless individuals would roll through the streets of Mechanicsville, stealing everything and vandalizing everything. And I was at a breaking point. I, I had been writing to council. I'd been speaking at public forum. And uh, nobody was seemingly listening or, or making any effort to do anything. So I started turning up the dial of the rhetoric, trying to find at what point can I get some attention. And sadly, until now, no one really took note of it. Um, we, I never got that attention. Um, and I, I, in many of these posts, I tagged the city council with this similar language, just trying, like, let's get this out there. Let's, let's have these hard decisions. And unfortunately, it's taken three years of me jumping into this race to get the attention on this issue. Have you ever been homeless? I have not been homeless. I have in this town. And I, it really offends me that you would come here tonight and make sh very poor excuses for horrible things to say about another human being. I'm assuming you're a Christian? I, I am not. Okay. What, whatever you believe in, do they believe you should euthanize people? No, and I don't. That, that was meant as hyperbole, as, as rhetoric. That ain't hyperbole. That's BS. You know that and I know it, okay? Why don't you at least have the guts to come here and tell us that you were trying to browbeat people and pick on the least productive members of society? What are you going to do about the uh, veterans? Are you a veteran? No, sir. Okay, so you've not been homeless. You're not a veteran. You got a place to sleep tonight? Yes. They don't. So I don't want to hear any more about how you were so offended because nobody paid any attention to me. You're not 15 years old. You're not a sophomore at Bearden High School. So why don't you act like an adult? Well, I, I, I consciously chose not to delete those comments, knowing that something like this would happen because I, the problem has only gotten worse. Um, I, I didn't get the attention then, but we have the attention now. And since then, nationwide, the homelessness problem has grown by 16% on average, according to HUD. Here in the streets of Knoxville, I know just from observing in Mechanicsville, it's gotten worse. And yet, there's no serious conversation about concrete solutions. How did, that, how did those comments be, give a concrete solution to anybody? They didn't. The idea was, this is so radical mm -hmm. that let's shock everybody to come to the table and have a conversation. And it didn't work, did it? It did not work. Okay. What are you going to do now? We're going to explore that <laughs> with both candidates Thank you. when we come back right after the break on Inside Tennessee.